Okay, so in this next video, now that we have had time to uh, recap the Poisson distribution, uh, let's now see how the Poisson distribution is related to the exponential distribution. So, uh, let's go back to our original probability space where we had emails arriving. And in this probability space, we had every possible way that emails can arrive. So between 0 and t, 0 and t, emails arrive. So there is one possibility that absolutely no emails arrive. There is then the possibility that one email arrives. There are absolutely loads of ways that one email can arrive. It can arrive at any of the times between 0 and t, basically. So there's one possibility. Then there's another possibility that it could arrive uh, between, uh, that it could arrive uh, further on. So it could arrive down here, basically. Okay, so what we now want to see is what's the um, relation of uh, the Poisson distribution to the exponential distribution. So we saw that we had a random variable xt which ascribed which ascribed to uh, the uh, well, ascribed to each one of these outcomes uh, the number of emails which arrives within that interval zero t. So zero, one, two, three, etc., all the way on, and it can get arbitrarily large. Okay, and we saw in the previous video that xt was, po well, it's actually written up there, xt was Poissonly distributed with a Poisson parameter lambda t. Now what we want to do is imagine extending these back out. So we need to, uh, we need to remember that all of these um, had, um, well, they all had, um, they all had, we were, our original uh, problem was that we are receiving emails, and it didn't necessarily stop at t. It could go far beyond t. Now, of course, for every, sing for every single one of these outcomes here, so for every single possibility in this probability space, so let's say we didn't receive any emails in 0 to t, there are absolutely loads of possibilities in a larger probability space uh, containing all the bit the, all the tail ends basically because for instance you could receive one email here you could receive another email here there are absolutely loads of possibilities for what happens next so basically what I want to now do is make a bigger probability space make an even bigger probability space so uh, let's make a bigger probability space okay so da -da 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 -da. So here we have our bigger probability space, and it now contains more information. It contains far more outcomes than we're in here. It contains uh, all the information about the emails arriving from time zero onwards, and it does no longer stops at time t. So basically, there is the possibility that you never ever in your entire history of the universe ever, ever receive an email. Um, so there's one outcome. Then there's the possibility that you still don't receive any emails in 0 to t, but then you receive an email, let's say, the instant the t time is out, basically. Okay. So basically, what I'm trying to say is that for that one possibility in this probability space, there are lots of prob possibilities in this one. Uh, then, of course, there's another pro possibility here from 0 to t, uh, and you have, let's say, one email within the interval 0 to t, and then maybe another email out here. So there are all, we're putting in every possibility for how you can receive intervals uh, sorry, for how you can receive emails on uh, the interval 0 to plus infinity, basically. Okay, and we can still set up this random variable xt, which is going to map you onto the number of emails you receive in the interval 0 to t. And basically, it's still going to be the same distribution, basically, uh, because for every outcome in here, there are all the possibilities that you can have in this tail, for, but that Yes, okay. In this one, there are more outcomes. Uh, there are loads of outcomes corresponding to each one of the outcomes here. But the number by which it inflates is exactly the same for every outcome in here. I, what I mean is if you take any of the outcomes that was in here, the way that you get from that to here is you times it by the number of possible outcomes for the tail. So for every single one, you can uh, make more uh, outcomes in here, and the number by which you can amplify uh, is uh, amplify the number in here is going to be the number of possibilities for how you can ascribe emails in the tail end, i.e. from t onwards. But that's exactly the same for any of the outcomes in here. So they're all bumped up by the same amount. So this random variable isn't going to change because 
all of the ones in here are going to be bumped out by the same amount, and all of those bumped out versions, so all of the ones which are the, which are, so if you imagine all of these here, all of these ones where you have received no emails on the interval 0 to t, they are all equivalent as far as this probability space is concerned. Uh, so they will all be mapped onto 0, and basically the num the probabilities of getting each one of these numbers won't change uh, because uh, the number of outcomes uh, corresponding to each one of these has been bumped up by the same amount basically so the probabilities will not change so x t is still going to be Poissonly distributed uh, lambda t and if you think about it intuitively that shouldn't be surprising because why should the probability distribution of how many emails you receive in the interval zero t be changed by the fact that we are now looking, that we are now uh, observing what happens afterwards. The information of what happens afterwards should not affect what the information we've already collected. Uh, so uh, it shouldn't be affected at all. Okay, right. Now we're going to create another random variable. And what should I call this random variable? Don't want to call it y. We've used y. Don't want to call it z because z usually denotes a normal. We'll use w. Uh, w is going to map each one of these outcomes onto um, onto a positive real number, so 0 to plus infinity. And the way it's going to work, w is going to map each outcome onto the uh, the amount of time, the, let's say, um, the amount of time, I'll just write it out, amount of time, sorry, um, well, no, I'll just write the time, it's going to map it onto the time that the first email arrives. The first email arrives. And what we're going to see is that that's going to be exponentially distributed in now arrives. Okay, so basically, uh, if you look at this one, this, fir th this outcome here has a time when the first email arrives. This email here is the first email to arrive for this outcome. Whatever that time is, W will map that outcome onto that time. For this one here, this is the time when the first email arrives. So W will map it onto that, uh, that value there. Okay, right, so how can we work out what the probability mass function in this case for W is? Well, what we're going to have to do is work it out from the CDF. So we can ask, what is the probability that W, and now the CDF would be W is less than or equal to little w, but instead what we're going to look at is one, well, we're going to say that the probability that w is less than or equal to little w, where little w is some positive real number, is going to be 1 minus the probability that big w is greater than little w. So if I draw a picture, here is, let's say this is 0, here is little w. We want to know the CDF, which is the probability that it's less than or equal to little w, and we're going to say that that is 1 minus the probability that it's um, greater than that value little w. And why is that a sensible thing to do? Because this says, what is the probability that the e the first email to arrive, uh, that the, uh, sorry, that the value, sorry, that what's the probability that the first email to arrive um, is beyond time little w, i.e. what's the probability that the first email to arrive is in this green interval here, i.e. what's the probability that the interval 0 to t has absolutely no emails in it. So this this probability that big W is greater than little w is equal to the probability that um, now we set t equal to w. It's the probability that x w um, is equal to zero because remember x w uh, will if we if we now set this little t value to be equal to w that will map. Uh, each outcome onto the number of emails that you receive in time w. So, this is basically equal to the probability that that random variable is equal to zero. And we know how that random variable is distributed. We know that the probability mass function for this random variable xw, the probability that xw is equal to zero, is equal to, let me pull this up now, uh, is equal to uh, the Poisson uh, distribution the Poisson distribution probability mass function, which is e to the negative lambda, now it was t, but t is now w, so we substitute in w times lambda w 
So the power of, uh, in this case, the number of emails we want to receive is zero, so we put in zero, divided by zero factorial. Now zero here, anything to the power of zero, this is a positive, this is not zero basically, this number here. So uh, this is going to be one basically, and zero factorial is also equal to one. So this thing just becomes e to the negative lambda w, right. Okay, so that tells us that the probability that w is greater than little w, i.e. the probability that the time you have to wait for your first email is greater than little w, is equal to e to the negative lambda w, which tells us that the CDF function for uh, the probability that the amount of time you have to wait is less than or equal to little w is going to be equal to 1 minus e to the negative lambda w. I, that is the CDF of big W as a function of little w. Now you will recognize, hopefully, that CDF. And if you don't, let's go further and work out its... Oh, oh dear, I've used the wrong notation. That's the CDF, that's big F. Let's work out the little f, the PDF. By differentiating this, when we differentiate 1, that goes to 0. Then we get minus e to the negative lambda w. Differentiate the top, we get negative lambda. So we get that this overall makes lambda e to the negative lambda w. Now that is the PDF of the exponential distribution. And that is the CDF of the exponential distribution. So w is basically going to be exponentially distributed with parameter lambda. And that's the relation between the Poisson and the binomial distribution.